in the immortal words of Will Ferrell. We're going streaky! The Dallas Mavericks are on a three-game win streak, decimating the very, very shorthanded Golden State Warriors by 48 points at the AAC tonight. This was a whooping in every sense of the word. The Mavericks laid it on them. This was a skull-dragging performance by the Mavericks. And you know what? It should have been. We knew, obviously, going into the game, they weren't going to have Steph. He's going to be probably out for the year, certainly out for a while before he has any chance of coming back. And if you're Golden State, why would you bother bringing him back? Because you're going to tank this year. You're really bad this year. Uh, Then they lost D'Angelo Russell for a couple weeks. Well, dodged a bullet there for the Mavericks. And then we find out about, what, not even an hour before game time that they weren't going to have Draymond Green either? Dude, I, I don't even know what team you run out there at that point for Golden State, but it's not going to be pretty. And not pretty it was. Luka Doncic picks up right where he left off against the Spurs the other night, records another triple-double, another 35-point triple-double, 35, 10, and 11 in just 20. I think it was 26 minutes. I have 25 on the board. 11 of 18 from the field, 6 of 10 from three. His three-point percentage, which had been on the low end at 31.3% entering the game, should see a little bit of an uptick now, uh, 6 of 10 in this game. But, man, in that Spurs game, In the first quarter, he set a single-quarter career high with 17 points. He joked after the game that he had, in his pregame nap, he had a dream that he was going to go and score 16 points in the first quarter, and then he scored 17 points instead, which means, obviously, dreams don't come true. His words, not mine. Well, he's still riding on that, uh, that whole dream high or something because he came out and put up 22 points in the first quarter here, 22-5-5 in the first quarter. He single-handedly outscored the Golden State Warriors 22-16 in the opening frame. Dallas led 44-16 after one, and good googly moogly, you're not going to be able to overcome that for Golden State. I mean, it, it it was the Luka Doncic show. Like, I know some people might get a little bit frustrated when it's so Luka centric on the hype, but this kid's 20. It's unreal what he's doing. I'm pretty sure this is the first time. They said it late in the broadcast. I want to say it's the first time since either 84 or 86 that you've had back-to-back 35-point triple-doubles, which is pretty impressive considering how you you have uh, these elite players now pretty frequent triple-doubles in today's game. Like James Harden, Russell Westbrook has averaged a triple-double the past three years and beat Oscar Robinson's single-season record with 42 triple-doubles. So, yeah, that either of them don't have that is impressive. LeBron James, he got a, a whole hype train of buzz around him because he became the first player in NBA history to record a triple-double against 30 separate teams. Okay, cool, whatever. I mean, Russell Westbrook stayed with the Thunder until this year, so... Technically, yes, Westbrook had the first crack at that, and I think he missed it by one assist in that game against OKC in that rematch, but I digress. The point is people people want to talk a lot about LeBron if he does anything. It's impressive. It's a nice trait, but to act like he's the triple-double king is kind of hilarious to me. But all the same, in this game, Luka was the man. 25 points, 35, 10, and 11. That's That's stupendous, but you know what? I actually wrote an article, released it today on the Dallas Prospect. It should be going up hopefully tomorrow on Dallas Sports Fanatic as well. And it was based off of Luca's comments at the end of the Spurs game. That was, you know, the huge Dorian Finney Smith game. He goes for 22 points in that game. And after the game, one of the first things that comes out of Luca's mouth is he technically doesn't say it correctly. He says one word, Dorian Finney Smith. Well, uh, if you're taking out the spaces in his names, I guess, sure. But it is what it is. Regardless, the point is, Luca, as a leader, understands, yeah, what I did is great. Like, awesome. Cool. Another record where my name's in the books with LeBron. That has kind of lost its meaning to Luca already in year two because he's been so tied to LeBron James already throughout his first year and a quarter. I think Luca, in his career, in terms of games he's played in now for the NBA, I think he's at about 90. So think about it that way it's just barely over you know the full season he's linked to LeBron all the time so now when he hears these stats it means not a lot to him he's just kind of like oh that's cool 
So, uh, yeah, let me, let's give some attention to my teammate here, uh, to Dorian Finney-Smith in this case. And what I talked about in the article based on that is that Luca, as a leader, understands it's not enough for me to shine and to succeed. We need the other guys, too. And it needs to be, it needs to be even more than just Porzingis as well. Uh, it needs to be either the collective bench unit, the bench mob, as they like to call themselves, or it needs to be a specific guy stepping up. Whether we've seen times this year where that guy has been Seth Curry, Memphis. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. had the Memphis game as well. They, uh, Hardaway Jr. had 20 in that game. And you've seen games then as well. Dodo had his moment. You've seen moments, flashes where other guys have stepped up. That's good. That's all great. You need that. And hey, to his credit, Tim Hardaway Jr. stepped up tonight in a big, big way. Seth Curry was out with illness for this game. So Tim Hardaway Jr. steps in to the starting lineup, and he goes 6 for 7 from the field, including 4 for 4 from downtown. 22 minutes, 20 points, 4 assists. Whoo! You're not going to get a lot of those out of Tim Hardaway Jr., but when you get them, damn, are they nice. Like, credit where credit's due. Uh, Carlisle has stuck faithfully by Hardaway Jr., waiting for him to shoot himself out of this slump. Hopefully this is an indication that that's what's happened here and it's not just a one-off fluke. I'm not saying I'm super high on the hype train of Tim Hardaway Jr.'s sixth man for us or anything, but I am hopeful that he can at least be a reasonable contributor to the bench unit because that'll help everybody if you get another guy that can create his own shot and who can be, you know, score and burst. That's something he's capable of doing. So... A lot of good stuff going on here elsewhere. Yes, it's a ho-hum game for Kristaps Porzingis. 14 points. I know his scoring average has dropped down a little bit here during this homestand, but it's the first time in his career, a career best fourth straight uh, double-double for him, and he's attacking the rim aggressively. He's getting dunks. He's looking for put-back dunks, and I like that you're seeing that aggressiveness with him. If you hear him talk about it, He's getting more and more comfortable, and as such, he's uh, he's getting a little more aggressive in that. So he's less forcing it, it feels like, in terms of hunting for his shot and more letting the game come to him. Now, there's a little bit of a balance there. I'd like to see him get to his, uh, his primary spots, his favorite spots, and work a little bit more there. But, you know, that's, that's a different issue entirely. The point is, 14 and 10 in a game like this, I'm content with that because if we had needed to play him more, he would have played more. So not a whole lot to be concerned about there. Dallas, though, in this game, I talked about in the first quarter the the blazing percentages for Dallas. 63% from the field, 57% from three, 86%, uh, 10 assists, and uh, 16 boards, more than four times as many boards in the opening quarter as Golden State. It pretty much kept going with that. Luka had 25-5-5 and five after the first frame, and you knew it was going to be a Luka show. And hey, nationally televised game. It got flexed out. So uh, let's see here. Through the first quarter alone, as Bobby Carella points out on Twitter, Doncic had scored or assisted on 32 points. 32 of the 44 points in the first quarter were scored on or assisted by Luka. That is nutty. That That's a stat... That as Bobby points out, that's good for a game. Like, that's pretty good for a game to get that out of someone. To get that out of one quarter for one guy is just crazy. So, let's see here. This is from ESPN Stats and Info. Luka Doncic joins Carl Anthony Towns back in January 2nd, 2019 against Boston as the only player over the last 15 seasons with 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in a single quarter. Damn. Elsewhere, at halftime, Dallas led this 74-38. The percentages had not really gone any more in Golden State's favor. 54% shooting for Dallas at the at the midway point. 30, or excuse me, 52% from three, 76% at the line. Uh, the turnover is still a smidge high, but it is what it is. 16 assists, 30 rebounds, still doubling up the Warriors in that regard with eight offensive boards. A lot to like here. Dallas, man, you win the game by 48. There's not going to be a lot to really point out or criticize or anything like that. Here's another uh, factoid here for Luka. Luka is the first player to have more points and assists than an opposing team in a quarter since Allen Iverson in 2003. So not only did he outscore him, he outassisted him too. Uh, until I just saw that now on Twitter, I wasn't aware of that one. Just kind of shows the, the ridiculousness with which Luka is playing right now. He is absolutely playing out of his mind and the only thing that's been kind of holding the team back just a little bit 
is just a couple of those key guys off the bench. Uh, you get that a little bit with Tim Hardaway Jr. here. Justin Jackson didn't have a great night. 29 minutes, 7 points, 2 boards, 2 assists, 3 of 7 from the field, 1 for 4 shooting. Did have a couple blocks that were nice, but I'd like to see a little more from him. Brunson was good too. Uh, 15, 5, and 5 in 23 minutes, 6 of 6 from the field. I, I'm glad. Brunson looks like he might be kind of finding his rhythm a little bit in the last couple games. I talked about the importance of getting the bench either collectively there or at least getting these one or two guys that could step up and kind of fill that void of a third player. You also got the season debut of Ryan Brokoff. He gets nine points in the game, three of three from the three-point line, three of five overall. Also gives you four boards and an assist. Uh, Courtney Lee, 12 minutes, 12 points. Hey, it's garbage time, but at least it's efficient garbage time. You don't get any Berea minutes, and uh, you do get a fair number of minutes, I believe. Yes, 20 minutes out of Boban. 10 points, 6 boards. So, yeah, there you go. Pretty much a clean sweep for Dallas here. Berea is the only guy that does not play. Even kind of joked late in the game about him running to the scores table to check in. I don't know what the whole deal with that is. I would have liked to have seen Berea, but I don't know. I, I wonder what's kind of going on with that because... And gar I, mean, I understand it's garbage time, but at the same point, it's like, what's the point of bringing him back for a year if you're going to play him once in 14 games? Like, he was damn effective when you played him in that one game. Why not lean on him a little bit and, you know, I'm not saying roll him out there every game. Just give him a, a few minutes here and there. You know what I mean? Like, play him once every three games at least. Something like that. Something to to kind of keep him in the rhythm and keep him ready, as Rick always likes to talk about. But... That's a separate issue we'll have to see about. Uh, final final lines here. Field goal percentage, Dallas 57%, 58% from three. 22 of 38, uh, 38 from three. That's bonkers three-point shooting. 78% uh, at the line on 23 attempts. The Warriors had more attempts but shot a worse percentage. 12 turnovers for Dallas, so much better in the second half. Um, yeah, from 7 to 12, so they cut back on that a little bit. 33 assists, really good. 50 rebounds, including 8 offensive. 7 blocks. Pretty nice night for the Mavericks here. So, yeah, this is uh, this is good. Mavericks are now 9-5 and five on the season. I don't know where they stand as of this exact moment in the Western Conference standings, but they're in a pretty good spot all in all. As Luca kind of talked about after that Spurs game, and I, I mentioned it in the article, like, at the time I wrote it, 8-5, and five, Eight and five, it's it's the best start they've had in three years as a franchise. But when you look at how close they were in games like the Lakers game, uh, the Portland game, obviously those two were very controversial endings. Uh, but you also had playing the like the Celtics right down to the end. That's three more games that you potentially could have had. Flip your record that way, you know that even if you had the bizarre Knicks games, you know, all right. Well, if you get those other three back, where are you standing now? You know, it's. It's crazy to think about. So while you can be happy and understand and have like a, an awareness of, hey, you know, I know we played a couple games sloppy that we maybe shouldn't have won like the Orlando game, but you know what? It's fine. We have the ability to be better is basically what Luca was saying. It's an awareness of that, that like, I'm not going to take for granted some of the games that we won that we maybe should have lost, but I also recognize some of those games that we lost and could have won, maybe should have won, you know, we, we got to be better on that front. So I'm, I'm damn happy with where the Mavericks are at right now. Now it hasn't all been pretty. I've, you know, jokingly been dr driven to the point of, uh, drinking on the channel, but, uh, no more Nick games on the schedule. So that shouldn't be a problem hopefully. But next up we got the Cleveland Cavaliers and then we head to Houston to play the Rockets. So we will have all kinds of triple-double alerts on the floor there with the Rockets, obviously having Harden and Westbrook, and then you'll have Luka on the floor for the Mavericks. So that's going to do it for my time here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me find the actual thing here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.